welcome everyone to Easy Cam's 2024 webinar featuring our milling products. We will have future webinars and we'll keep you posted when those are available. My name is Chris Lalashis and I've been with Easy Cam about 20 years now. I will be your support and sales representative. We're going to talk about solid models and how this is the major form of communication between en engineers and EasyCam programmers. It was that you had to create curves for boundaries and toolpaths. Now you just select the surface off the face of the, uh, the model and EasyCam will chain all the related faces that make up that feature. So we've increased the speed of programming threefold. Let's talk about your benefits. For joining this webinar, we're going to offer you a 20% discount. You own EasyCam once you buy. It's a one-time purchase. You do have the option to upgrade year to year, and the upgrade charge is only a fraction if you skip a year. It does not double. Subscriptions. We now have subscription services available. You get free text cam with your purchase. It's a $500 value. You can engrave any Windows font. You can machine centerline, bosses, pockets, and any of EasyCam's milling products. Free Filter Max, it's a $1,000 value. This is an RS-232 communication software. It will also optimize your program by up to 98%, taking all those small line segments and converting them into arcs in the G19, G18, G17 planes. This allows you to have higher feed rates and better part finishes. And I'll tell you, the 3D uh, toolpath enhancements are just unbelievable with this product. Uh, you get one year of support and maintenance with your purchase, and that includes if you purchase an upgrade. Custom interface. We create toolbars and buttons so you can remove the repetitive task of sliding your cursor across the screen. All features are included. So when you buy Mill and Mill Pro, you get your fourth axis uh, wrapping and indexing. Uh, for the Mill Pro, we have five axis positioning. Uh, we do include CAD, a Libre Atom 3D. DNC, we talked about the filter max. Post processors, I'll talk about those. And then verification, you get your stock simulation, your clamps and your fixtures. So those are all included in your purchases. Uh, post processors and editing. We include all the post processors you need. You don't have to pay for each one. And any editing, our team will be happy to take care of that for you under your one year support and maintenance, where you can feel more comfortable about hitting cycle start. SolidWorks and Alibre transfer. Now we also offer a variety of other extensions so you can communicate with any CAD system. Custom videos. If you're stuck on a topic, EasyCam will personalize a video for you to get you through, this, through the struggles. Uh, we do have over 200 videos on the web. Uh, they cover various topics. And if we don't have a topic you need, a video will be with you shortly. Wizards, we present you with the least amount of information up front so you can create a complete program. All the editing is in the background. Safety checklist. What I mean by that, it's the work step manager. There's a button for that in the lower left-hand corner of your EasyCam screen. This is a wonderful option to be organized before you post your G-code. You can organize your tool numbers, diameters, offsets, and so on. Solid models are not required in EasyCam. You can use curves and geometry to create simple paths where you don't have to redesign your model some of the things we're going to talk about, we have clearance around clamps and fixtures. We have start points for Z finishing. We have uh, protection for check surfaces, uh, drilling operations, whether you're machining to the rapid plane or the clearance plane. We've optimized toolpath around the stock. We now have center line passes for facing. Uh, depth control using a flat surface high-speed machining, fillet and diameter display, world on stock is available now, um, multiple parts, and of course our new wizards, we'll talk about those. 
Now you can define the extra stock for check surfaces. Well, on this graphic here, you can see we're using a finish allowance. Well, if we didn't have the finish allowance, you'd be bumping up to your clamps. So on the picture on the right, we're adding extra clearance onto check surfaces. Let's take a look at how that works. I'll just open up the, the wizard. You can see we have a 0.15 millimeter uh, finish allowance. So if we verify our tool path, you see that we're leaving just enough clearance around the clamps, but that's a finish allowance. We go into the check surfaces, deactivate the first, verify that. You can see that we're uh, clearing it by a greater margin into the wizard. I'm sorry, if we go down at the bottom, you'll see that you have WK step, work step, check allowance. Click on the ellipse. It opens up the 3D cycle data and I've cleared the clamps by one millimeter. Constant Z start and end point definition. All you have to do is add the start point as, a, as your path curve. Easy Cam determines where the start and end should be. Well, sometimes you can't take advantage of the ramp, the lead in and lead out that you'd like. Maybe it's too excessive. So in those tight regions, it's a no-go. So what we do is you can click on the screen. You don't have to be accurate and you can establish a new start and end point. Let's take a look at how that works. I'm gonna to try to transition between parts here as fast as I can. Constant Z, we'll verify. Okay, so we're, we're, we're getting tight here. Let's say we wanna start on this wall. So I'm just gonna do a top view. We'll take a look at our ramp values, which is found under plunge options. You have in and out. We have a five millimeter radius and we're approaching the part at a 45 degree angle. If you heard that going by, we had some snow, so the plows are cleaning up the streets. Hopefully we don't hear that too much. Uh, okay, so you create a curve, and this curve is labeled curves, curve 11. You use a point, whether it be a linear or a rapid. You snap to screen and just give it a location. We'll start right about here. Now you have to add that curve to the work step. So I'm just gonna to go to select path. Actually, back that up. We're gonna go into the wizard. For our path, it'll be curve 11. The second path is the boundary. We've drawn a curve 10. We've gone around and put up a boundary so we're only machining this one pocket. So we're restricting it and verify. And here you see we have our start and our end. And it was just as convenient as creating a curve, select somewhere on your screen, and you're good to go. All right, back to our slide. Check surface support and curveless operations. So when you pick the bottom surface of a pocket, EasyCam wants to machine that entire boundary. Well, in a case where there's an undercut, like you see in the graphic, we'd be violating the boss. So let's see how we control that. Again, with the transition, I'll try to be as fast as I can. Let's see, pocket undercut. Um, let's see. Let's zoom in. Let's look at the surface. This is the selected surface for the pocket. We're getting into a region we shouldn't be in. If I verify the toolpath, and you can see that clearly here. Let's do a 3D, let's turn off our fixture for now. Verify, and we've gouged the part. So to fix that, you just add a check surface. Click the top of the boss. It, prevents the tool path going into the part by the silhouette boundary. And we're good.
clearance plane and rapid plane. EasyCam detects where you're going to collide into a part or a clamp and determines whether you should have the clearance plane or the rapid plane. We know that the best optimal tool path is to have the clearance plane. If you're drilling hundreds of holes, you don't want to have to waste time going up to the rapid plane in between each hole. So let's take a look at that. Okay, when I verify my tool path, you can see between each hole, it's going to the rapid. So we're clearing the part no matter what. That's acceptable. But to make it optimal, we're going to use check Z clear. So we wrap it down, wrap it over on the clearance plane to the next hole. Easy cam detects the collision, goes to rapid move, comes back down and continues on to the clearance. Let's just look at another example of that. Where we have a couple of pockets with a few holes. This and verify. Okay, so we're going clearance plane, detecting the collision, rapid plane. So this is much more efficient. The easy cam handles that for you. All right, your wall pass, you got a helical tool path. So you have your total stock, how far the tool will start away from the wall. And for helical, the cut step represents a full revolution at one millimeter. That is a fantastic strategy if you're going to take full depth of cut and you want to be aggressive. Back to our parts. Okay, this was the conventional way it was handled before. You have your ramp in, cut set of uh, full revolution, feeds in again. You're getting a heavy chip load. And it's not going to help your cutter last any longer. So if you go into the wizard, we have helical closed. And we'll spiral up to the wall. You have your first lead in. Once it's completed, it ramps out. So it's highly effective. Custom stock using a stock curve. So you have a 2D curve. Uh, without that, without the stock, we're going to offset by the total stock and cut a lot of air. On the second graphic to the right, you can see that we've trimmed the tool path to the stock itself. We'll take a look at that example. Okay, this is the tool path without adding our custom stock, our 2D curve. Now, that curve has to have a special label. It has to be stock CRV. Once EasyCam sees a curve with that name, EasyCam knows that that's going, what it's going to be used for. So what we do to include that is you just go to Select Path, click on your curve, and just to make sure you're clicking on the right item, if you look in the list box in the upper right-hand corner, stock CRV. So we're good to go. Hit Enter, Verify and our tool path is trimmed. So that can be any shape stock. It doesn't have to be circular as you see in this example. Contour for center line here. So for facing work steps, on the right-hand graphic, you can see that we're getting a single pass. That's great. If your tool is oversized, you don't want any more than that. On the left-hand side, you see the ball end mill. It's the same size as the slot. You used to have to create a linear curve with geometry Extend the geometry beyond the boundary so the tool doesn't start and exit on the part. So let's look at an example for that. Okay, before 2024, this was your, when you selected a facing work step or a wizard, you would get a zigzag tool path. So you take multiple passes when it's really not uh, necessary. So if we go into the wizard, we change our cycle type to center line, and you get a single pass. We'll look at the next example with the ball end mill. 
center line ball. Okay. I'm just going to point out, let's look at the selected surfaces. You can see we only selected one. I didn't have to go through and select each and every one of them because we have a pattern. All right, so let's look at that. Okay, we do have a Z step, so we're not just plunging to full depth here. But you'll notice that we've cut all of the slots. So we have the original copy. Then we want two copies to the right. So there's an offset distance. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to hop across the y-axis using symmetry across y. Then we have that translation. All we have to do is take those slots and then symmetry across x. So let's see how that work step is set up. We go to advance. So when you have a pattern, we're, we're we have two copies. We're moving in a distance of 105 millimeters. So that gives us up to the coordinate system. Then we're going to use the Y symmetry, cut the remaining three, and take all six of those and flip them over on the X axis. Curveless contour depth input, fantastic feature. You have your contour, we chain all the surfaces together and easy cam wants to cut to the lowest point. Well, we have ribs in this example we'd be plowing through those, violating the part. So we need some way to control the depth of cut. Well, we don't have to input a value. You don't have to find that value on your model. All you have to do is select a single surface. Let me open that here. Flat surface. Okay, so I don't have any surfaces selected to my contour wizard just yet. So we're gonna go and select cut surfaces. Pick one, Easy Cam goes around and chains all the surfaces together that make up that feature. Now, you can control Smart Click. You, you don't, you know, if you wanted to select only a certain number of features, you hit the Shift key on your keyboard and you can pick individual faces. Verify. We violated the ribs. Go back in, add another uh, select cut surface. I'm going to put myself back into the smart click. Horizontal face, verify, and that's where the toolpath starts. So it's simple as that. Uh, fourth axis indexing. If you're doing any four axis parts that you're doing indexing with, this is, this is unbelievable. This is going great lengths. Uh, you used to have to create a coordinate system, know the angle for that coordinate system, then go in and rotate it. Then when you're inside of the wizard, you had to assign the proper coordinate system. Well, we've taken care of that for you. And let's just jump right into that. Open our file, axis. Okay, I'm just gonna verify all of them. And you can see as you're watching the, the simulation, you can see that it's gonna be at angles. Uh, your pockets are holes and there's, EasyCam's going to align all the coordinate systems or everything in the background for you. If you look at the Workstep Manager and you see the MCS ID, it's all world. We handle every other, uh, all the other types of coordinate systems. So if I look at a whole operation, okay, EasyCam aligns the Z axis to the center of the hole. And we'll look at a pocket or facing surface easy cam aligns the z-axis perpendicular to that face and then we have our contours and through pockets we align the z-axis parallel and if none of those conditions are met we'll default to the world so if you were doing some 3d surfacing if you needed an angle then that would be a case where okay i'm doing 3d surfacing what angle do i want you'd make a coordinate system for it Kind of makes sense. All right, let's go back to the slides. Trochoidal toolpath. I'm just going to talk about the graphic. It's pretty straightforward. Before 2024, used to arc into the uh, corners and whatnot, and it would be a smaller arc. In 2024, we made a wider sweep, so you can use higher feed rates, and you get better part finishes that way. Radius diameter representation. 
you used to have to go in and, and check the radius and go back and click your hole and, and then remember that value. Uh, here, you just double click on a hole. EasyCam will present you with the diameter. And it also works for filleted surfaces, by the way. Uh, and it copies that value to the clipboard where when you're inside of the wizard, you can just paste it into the dialog. Okay, so I'm double clicking on this hole. The diameter is displayed. It's copied to the clipboard. But another huge benefit is if you look in the list box in the upper right, it highlights the operation and is drilling that hole. So I just go in there, paste, pick my next set of holes. Drill is uh, highlighted and paste. So you can continue on that way. Fantastic feature. I'm just going to show you the corner fillet there. That's a 10 millimeter. It's five millimeters in radius. All right. See what else is in store for us. Okay, world on model stock. It used to be that we would put our coordinate system according to the finished part. So in this picture here, you can see the finished part, we would be inside of the stock. So if you touched off your tools at the machine, you'd have to translate the coordinate system up, move it up to be in line with the, the rough stock. So we've taken care of that for you. So let's bring up that example. Webinar. All right, we'll take a side view. Perfect. Okay, so the coordinate systems align with the part. Go into the world on model icon. We're going to position it on the top, in the center. Create stock surface. Well, this was unchecked. I had to check this. This is what you'd normally see. Uh, create a stock surface. So we'll create a block around the part. Then we're going to add world on stock. We want our coordinate system on the top of the block. We'll offset it by five millimeters. And there it is, as simple as that. So if you had a corner, we would position it according to the rough material. A lot of operators will touch off that way. All right, next slide. Our repeat manager, a great tool. Uh, used to be where you had to go into each work step, each operation, and go to translation like we did with the ball end mill. So you're going back, you're going to add your translations and whatnot. And you would have to do that for every work step. Well, I'm going to bring up copy from current work step. So when you add those translations like we did in the ball end mill, maybe you want that throughout the throughout all of the parts you're going to machine. So that's what copy from current work step will do for you. So let's go on and talk about the other options. I had my coffee, so we're doing pretty good here. Multiple fixture. Okay, so right now, let's, let's verify all machining. We're machining one part. Well, we have three copies. Go into the multiple fixtures wizard. We have work shift copies. So maybe you were at the machine, you touched off for G54. You move over, you go to the next vice, you touch off the corner of your part for G55 and so on. So up to 57, uh, you can make copies that way. Well, in the G code program, we'll give you G54, G55 for each location and we'll cut the part. Maybe you're gonna transform like we did with the, the ball end mill. You have an X shift, the parts are 200 millimeters apart. So this is fine if you have a, your translation distance is uniform, that's great. Well, if it's not, you're gonna to go to work shift copies, use your G54, G55, so those can be shifted and placed wherever it's necessary. We have group by tool. Uh, if we activate that, tool one will cut the first part, move along, cut the second, third, and so on. Uh, if we have that off, What's gonna happen is it will just complete the whole part. Tool one, tool two, everything's gonna machine the first part. It'll move along, move to the second and cut that part as well. Macros, hey, it just shortens up your program. Everybody likes that. So uh, if your computer, if your machine does not have a lot of memory, macros are the way to go. Uh, skip deactivated work steps. 
So if you didn't want something translated, uh, you just simply right click, uh, go in the list box. Let's, uh, whoops, I didn't want to delete set copies. If I go into the list box, I can right click and deactivate. So when I go to the fixture manager, that will not be included with any translations. Verify all. Now you can see we're making our copies. All right, back to our slide. And lastly, we're going to talk about our new wizards. A fantastic improvement. Uh, if we look at the contour, we have advanced tool, and then you have select tool in the facing. Well, under advanced tool, maybe your contour, you're going to use a corner round. Maybe you're going to use a ball end mill, a tapered mill. You used to have to go into advanced. So you'd have to be familiar with the program. You'd have to go into advanced and know what you're selecting. Well, with this being presented here, it's plain as the nose on your face. Uh, down here, we have Mill and Mill Pro, the MCS ID. If you're machining multiple sides of your part, then when you're fl uh, flipping the part and whatnot, you can do that all in one document with the Mill and Mill Pro. With the Express, and, and this is something you have to consider whether or not you should upgrade to Mill or Mill Pro, is that in Express, you open up a document, import your part, and then machine the top of the part. Then you would have to open another document, open your part again, flip the part over, and then you would be able to machine the bottom. So, yeah, a little bit of work, but for the price point, I think you're good. And then you see that we have cycles. We've added many more features. Uh, so like in the pocket, you have high-speed machining, you have zigzag. When you click on any one of those words, it'll update the graphic for you. So you can see the style of tool path you're going to get before you before you finalize that. So let's go in and we'll take a look at our wizards. Open that file for you. There we go. I'm just going to verify all. OK, so that machined the top of the part. I'll play it through so you can get a picture of that. And what I've done is I've created a bottom coordinate system. It's not the actual bottom, but it's on the side. Uh, let's just go. So if I click on UCS World, activate my bottom, EasyCam will know that you're using that. So whenever you make any wizards from that point on, it knows it's until you change it, it knows it's using that coordinate system. So I'm just going to leave that alone. Let's open up one of these wizards. Uh, we're going to pocket. So like I said, with the select tool, maybe it's not flat. You have ball, bowl, bowl nose tool, corner rounds, and so on. So that's right there in the wizard. Um, your coordinate systems, I'm going to pick bottom. That's where we're going to place this slot. Then our types of tool path, if I click on pocket, you can see it's just a standard pocket with a straight step over. Well, we do use an S-Link, so it's efficient. And we'll use high-speed machining. Hit OK. Smart click is active. Simply collect the, select that face. Verify. Now let's do a rapid cut. Excellent. All right. Well, guys, that concludes the presentation. Uh, we're open for question and answers at this time. OK, we had a question about the thread milling uh, with tapered pipe threads. It's not available at this time. It is on the list of things to do. And I will I will send you guys out an email letting you know if, if that's uh, available to you. Do we have any other? questions. I don't seem to see any, but again, don't hesitate to call us. If you want a personalized video on something, happy to make one for you. Uh, whoop, one more question. Okay, when we select a face, let me open up another example. Um, 
So if I'm going to make a pocket, I think I understand the question correctly here. Smart click, click the bottom of the pocket, enter. If I go into the work step, the depth is zero for me. I think when we select it, why doesn't it update the values? Uh, you can go to advance, and then for the depth, you can hit auto. Let's see, where is it? It's already at the surface, let's say. Why didn't that update? Okay, well, I will get back to you on that. Uh, we'll just hold off on that question, uh, but we'll, we'll get back to you. I, I know the question, and I'll give you an example of that. Uh, do we have any other questions at this time? Okay, well, we don't have any more questions at this time. So this concludes the whole webinar. And again, we'll inform you of future webinars to come and give us a call. 508-347-3222 uh, and take advantage of your 20% discount. I hope to hear from you guys soon. Take care.